Okay, what we have here is the Grand Seiko SBGN029. Now I had to look down because I can't remember that code number. Just doesn't really sort of roll off the tongue, but hey, that's Grand Seiko for you. Quirky, but as we'll see, great value. And as this one is now 12 months in my possession, hopefully I've got quite a bit to say. So let's dive into it. I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. Now this channel is about me and my watch collecting journey, an amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, helping like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now if you like this video why not give the thumbs up and whilst you're there why not subscribe. Please also check out the link tree uh, link in the description that will give you access to my Amazon store and some of the other social links, uh, Facebook, Instagram and some of my affiliates as well so appreciate that. Okay, so it's been 12 months. So I bought this Grand Seiko GMT 12 months ago. Now, I'm not going to say that I've worn it every day. In fact, I haven't worn it every day. It's, it was bought originally to be my sort of travel watch. So I was going to be working in London more, uh, traveling a bit. So what better than a watch that sort of flies under the radar, still has a bit of panache, um, still has that luxury feeling. But, you know, nobody's going to cut your arm off for a quartz a Seiko. Well, at least I hope not anyway. Now, before uh, we go into how the last 12 months has been with this pretty wonderful watch and whether you should buy a Grand Seiko, let's have a look at the specs. Now, this watch is the Grand Seiko SBGN029. It is the Blue Scarlet Quartz GMT version. Now there's also a slate version and where as this one has a blue dial with red uh, GMT hand, the slate version has a black dial with a white GMT hand. Now I did do a comparison of the two a while back so it's worth checking that out but I did think at the time that the white GMT hand was a little bit too much like the minutes hand so I found that a bit confusing so and I did like the pop of red which is why I went for red. Now this is part of the sport range. Now there's a wide variety of sport watches that Grand Seiko do. They do a number of GMTs with a number of different movements as well. So it's worth having a look at those. Now I will say that at £2,950, this is one hell of a sports watch. This is the newer version with the crown at the four o'clock. They used to do one with the crown at three o'clock that has been discontinued. So I th prefer this version. Um, but there's lots of versions available and they all look very similar. Now, one of Grand Seiko's um, mission statements, if you like, is accuracy, beauty, legibility, durability and ease of use. Now, I'll certainly say that accuracy and durability, um, yes. Legibility, well, yeah, I guess. Um, the hands are, yeah, they're quite thin. Um, but there's good contrast between the dial and the hand, so it's not too bad. Ease of use, well, it's a watch, isn't it? You would argue that the little crown at four o'clock could be a bit fiddly, but given it's a quartz watch, other than doing the date change twice a year or, or adjusting the, um, the local hour hand for the GMT when you travel, uh, you don't really have to fiddle with the crown anyway, so it's just sort of tucked out of the way. So, yeah. I'll go with that. Now, as it says in the title, it is a quartz watch. It's not a mechanical watch. Although this is uh, the in-house 9F86 quartz movement, which uh, I believe is is um, hand assembled in certain stages. So it is, it's a properly, uh, I'm going to call it high horology quartz. And it's accurate to plus or minus 10 seconds a year, which I have to say, I've not really tested, uh, and I've fiddled with it a bit recently, because uh, when I was travelling the other week, I realised that the GMT hand was in the wrong position. I don't know how that happened, but it's I couldn't live with it, so I had to uh, stop the watch and, uh, and adjust it. So I don't know, is the honest answer. But it's one of those things where it's a quartz watch. When you pick it up, you reasonably expect it to be telling the right time. And it does whenever I pick it up, so all good. Now this having the uh, the 9F quartz in-house caliber. Now this is no ordinary quartz. So I've had quartz watches before, you know, cheap ones, swatches, etc. This is not that. This is a high horology quartz movement, partially hand assembled um, by 
skilled craftsmen in Japan and women. Uh, and it uses uh, a quartz oscillator that's grown by Grand Seiko, tested for three months. Um, so they say they only use the best oscillators. Now, I'm not going to try and explain how quartz uh, movement works, but the crystal oscillates at tens of thousands of oscillations per second, uh, which then is sending electrical pulses to some sort of circuit board, which then steps it down using gears and all sorts of stuff to uh, seconds, which is why you get the tick, tick, tick and not a smooth movement. Now, I don't mind that. My only bugbear of quartz watches is if the seconds hand doesn't hit all the markers, and sadly not all of them do, especially cheap ones. So this one hits all the markers, so all good. So let's get into some of the specs, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you some of my experiences of um, Grand Seiko ownership, because it is an ownership experience, especially if you join the GS9 club. So spec-wise, um, this is a 39mm case, uh, the lug to lug is just under 46 millimeters, which is a nice size for me. Case thickness 12.3 millimeters. Uh, it's fully stainless steel. Uh, the brace is stainless steel. Uh, it doesn't really taper. The lug width is 19 millimeters, uh, and there's no uh, incremental adjustment on the clasp. Water resistance is 20 bar or 200 meters, and it has. Um, both brushed and polished um, flanks. Now, the case itself is brushed on the top, and then there's the Zeratsu polishing on the sides and on the bevel of the lug hoods. Now, the bracelet is all brushed, as is the uh, bezel, which is very, we'll call it uh, Rolex Explorer 2 esque. Now the case also has uh, holes in the side, so old fashioned style, so like the old Rolexes. And you'll also notice on mine that it's got a few uh, scratches and dings uh, where I've not deliberately battered it, uh, but I've worn it around a laptop and it got clouted by a hotel door the other week, uh, which uh, wasn't cool. On the dial, this one is a really, really deep blue, so a real inky blue, almost black. Now it's got printed... Um, Grand Seiko lettering, but there is, I think there's a small applied GS, not too sure what it's made from, uh, but it is white. Now, luminosity wise, this one's not great. It's got uh, Seiko, well, Grand Seiko's Luma Bright, but only the 12, 3, 6, and 9 indices are loomed, as are the hour hand, the minutes hand, and the GMT hand. So, not massively luminous. Now, you'll also notice around the inner or the rehort. I think they call it, there's a sort of a night and day track that's got, that sort of mimics the uh, intermediate hour markers. So on the bezel, you've got two, four, six, eight, and then on this inner track, you've got one, three, five, seven. And then there's uh, a night and day, so from black to, to silver pretty much uh, at the three o'clock and nine o'clock, or in 24 hour speak, six o'clock and six o'clock. There's no open case back on this one it's just got the Grand Seiko Lion uh, disc on the back looks very much like an old Omega case back with the hippocampus but a line in this instance now looking back at the bracelet it is just a simple uh, sort of lever clasp two button release it's got the Grand Seiko uh, logo uh, on the back of the clasp there's no adjustment really now I've not tried this one on any aftermarket straps but I, I, I just think that this one because it's a sports watch it's one, one watch that I just wanted to keep as a, a bracelet watch I do have other bracelet watches but I tend to mix them up and this one um, I don't really have any desire to do that it's my one and only bracelet only watch when I bought the watch the nice chap in goldsmiths who's now left sadly we do miss you guy uh, he said you've got to sign up for the GS9 club. Now the GS9 club is for Grand Seiko owners and they, you get a, a magazine sent through now and again. You get invited to special um, evenings at different boutiques and authorised dealers to look at new product. But they also send you nice little things like um, 
Season's greetings from us all at Grand Seiko. Uh, with very best wishes for 2024 from Rob. Or this one. It was a bit of a long one, this. Uh, Dear Andrew, welcome to the UK GS9 Club. We're really pleased you've joined our community. Um, and again, it's handwritten. That's really nice. And they also sent me some swag. You can sort of see here, I've got a Grand Seiko little, I guess it's a pin, which I'll probably never wear. Maybe to an event if I ever get around to going to one. And they also sent me this um, this pen which is one of those multicolored pens, uh, which I've never used. Now, I'm quite flattered that you know, these things have been sent through. It's nice to get some swag, isn't it? Now, when I did buy the watch, they also, I also got a um, little little notebook, <laughs> again, which I've never used. And I got another one of those pens. I've now got two of these pens. It's a bit like Cracker Jack, isn't it, this? And uh, the pin and a nice couple of cards and some magazines is a is my gs9 magazine so you do start to collect lots of stuff i worked for a japanese company many many years ago and there was a japanese engineer i used to work he used to go back home um obviously at the holiday times and he'd come back with all sorts of little stuff like this little i've never opened this actually just a little japanese sumo wrestler keyring um or my little dude clock we like the dude clock the robot clock and then this thing here which used to be a i think it was an ear scraper i don't know what happened to the um the stick that was on the bottom of it we used to sort of use it to scrape the wax out your ears i never use it for that but i've still got the the end it must have fallen off and then the ps de resistance is these uh wonderful hope cigarettes which, at the best part of 25 years old, I dread to think what these are like now. Um, now, I did smoke back in my youth, which I don't recommend, by the way. Um, but yeah, I, th I remember at the time we compared the milligrams of tar, or I can't forget what they are now. It says 14 milligrams and 1.2 milligrams on the side, which I think is quite high. Um, they're never going to get opened. Hope, I just thought that was ironic. I thought, I'm going to keep that. So the Japanese, they do like to send gifts, uh, which, again, I appreciate, absolutely, because I've had sweet FA off any of the other brands I've been associated with. Uh, but hey, now, what I'll do at some point is just a, a little unboxing. I'll put the watch back in the box and we can have a look. But just quickly, the box is nice. Um, it's got some rice paper inside. I've got the links. It's got a nice little cushion in there. I won't go into that because it's pretty boring. So there you go. That is my Grand Seiko experience. Um, now the question you're asking is, do I actually like the watch? I do like the watch, which is why I'm wearing it today. I was, I was wearing it abroad this week, went to Sweden, uh, wore it. Um, it's fine, it's just comfortable, it sits there, it doesn't dig into my wrist. Uh, I've managed to size it perfectly. It's a good size, it doesn't catch on a sleeve or a cuff always tells the right time. There's always someone with a noisy motorbike, isn't there? Yes, it always tells the right time. Uh, I like the jumping hour feature for the GMT hand. Um, and yeah, I think the last time I went to Sweden, I had the Tudor GMT. Um, that was the time I went. I did a little short and I had a room that had no windows in it. I remember that. Gosh, I think that was about three years ago. Um, this time I don't know, it was a nice room, it's small but nice, anyway. So yeah, 39mm, perfect for my wrist. Now will I buy any more Grand Seiko? Um, I don't know. I do like the spring drive but I think, I don't I don't want to grow my collection too much. I, I just want to enjoy what I've got and um, if I did that it would be at the expense of something else. And I don't know what I'd want to get rid of at the moment. And for me, a lot of the Grand Seikos look the same. Uh, I know there's different case styles and the dials are this and that and the other, but I don't know, I'm, I'm at a point where I want to sort of consolidate. And it's nice to, to have experience with other watches, for sure. Uh, and I have enjoyed wearing and enjoying this Grand Seiko. Um, 
whether I'd want to spend more on one, I don't know. I think as an entry level, what I paid for this, which is a bit less than retail, um, perfect. I'm never going to get rid of it. It's not worth it. Um, it's just one of those quartz watches. You pick it up and go. You don't need to worry about winding it. It'll always tell the right time. Might have adjust the date. But again, that's easy because you've got the GMT um, hand in the, the sort of jumping hour. So you don't have to stop it. So for me, this is a solid staple in my collection. Um, maybe it'll go to one of my sons at some point. I don't know. Um, but like I said, at and under £3,000, yes, you can get a Tudor or a Long Jean or something else or something else. But I just think the finish on this watch, you know, the the hands, how they're crafted, the indices, how they're crafted, uh, and the overall engineering and build, and the quirkiness of it as well. I think you can't beat it, really. So, yeah. Anyway, I'd love to know what your comments are. Um, now, on my camera it's saying 28 minutes on this video which hopefully when I cut it down it'll be much shorter <laughs> but um, and what I am going to do as well I'm going to do the unboxing and little review because I'm going to do these long form videos and then try and do shorter um, quick reviews if you like because not everyone likes the long form videos in fact someone did say to me in the comments about or oh, it could be one of my patrons they said oh this video is a bit long um, people have got the attention span of a goldfish. They do, but I think some others like these longer form videos. And there are videos out there that do much, much, much longer ones. But anyway, leave some comments at the end and check out those links. So for now, I'm Andy. This has been The English Watch. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.